adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Harry Canterbury. There I was, back in the wild again. And I fell right at home, where I belong. I had that feeling coming over me again. Just like it happened so many times before. Hi, Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. We're coming home pretty quick. In fact, I'll be leaving uh, Monday morning to uh, get back to Peoria to take care of a few things. Got to come back and close the place up. But looking forward to getting some of those great morel mushrooms. We had a fantastic time down here in Florida this winter, didn't we? We did. Got to see my mother and a lot of our good friends. A lot of people came to visit. And in fact, we've we, got we went boating. Nice and... folks here right now. Yes. Yeah, we, got we got the Tremont girls three here. Three girlfriends here. Yeah. yeah. Right. They flew down on the Legionnaire. Yeah. It was great. And as you can see, I have my Florida gun shirt on. Florida is a, a gun happy, uh, you know, gun, gun friendly. State. Yeah, it's uh, everybody's got one down here, and it makes things really safe. Florida has figured that one out, and I wish the rest of the country would too. But stay tuned today for a great show. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsall Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway, Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily, Eastport Marina, one of the only marinas in its class between Chicago and St. Louis, on Mariner's Way in East Peoria. Goodwill, supporting our veterans with job placement assistance, health, housing, and resource referrals, and the General Wayne A. Downing Home for Veterans, all because you shop and donate. And by Lori Feld of Allstate Insurance, conveniently located in Peoria, Springfield, and their new location at 411 East Washington Street in East Peoria. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. It was a great day for a boat trip. So Kathy and Harry Canterbury took the film crew and we all boarded the Spirit of Peoria. I decided to go upstairs to the pilot house and meet Captain Greaves, who was supposed to be steering the ship. But when I got up there, it was Harry Canterbury steering the ship. Well, she's a little touchy, too. You, you think that, that uh, you don't have to spin her a lot, do you? No, no, you don't. I, 
There's your rudder indicators down here to kind of help. I like to look at these. See down here? It uh -huh. shows where your rudders are. You're straight at midship. I mean, you know, you're going straight ahead, basically. So I'm straight ahead if I go on zero, right? Yep, yep. And, you know, you, know, you can turn, you want to go left to port start, you know, about 5, 10 degrees, and she'll start moving fast. Give us a little navigation about the river. We're coming between the green and red markers, so we're kind of pretty close to the center. Yeah, that's, going down. that's pretty important where, on, the, on the river system. Where do you, uh, now where would you uh, point the boat for your next mark? Well, obviously we try to stay in the channel. The channel's guaranteed to be at least nine feet deep. Right. Um, obviously we've, we're up where well, the water is, is very high right now. We're probably still about six feet above pool stage. Our pool stage is normally 12 feet. And I think we're, I think we're right now about uh, 18 feet. So, so theoretically you could go just about anywhere on the river right e now. Exactly, yeah, we, we could. We can get out of the channel. But the sad part about the, the upper lake here, when we, when we come through the Peoria Narrows, it's the widest part of the river, but it has some of the narrowest channel. Um, even though it looks so wide, uh, very few boats will pass in that section of the river. Uh -huh. uh, you, that's why if you ever travel up along 29, you'll see the towboats wading um, in the narrows, because it is deep in the narrows, and they'll wait there until a boat comes across Peoria Lake from Chillicothe and uh, Mossville area. But the average depth outside the channel in the upper lake is only 18 inches deep. So I always really? tell people when we get up in the upper lake, if uh, if you'd see the red and green buoys, you could pretty much walk to shore yeah. if you could make it out of the channel. So well, you're doing a great job. You well, got this. Uh, I got her under control. You got it under control. And yeah, for a little while. No problem. My name is Brian Fox Ellis, and I'm the River Lorian for the Spirit of Peoria Riverboat. I've been working on the boat for more than 25 years. Hard to believe the way time flies. Uh, but my job as the River Lorian is I'm in charge of the lore of the river. I'm a historian and naturalist. I lead hikes when we get to uh, Starved Rock State Park or Paramarquette State Park. I'm also a bit of a naturalist and I perform as John James Audubon and I lead bird hikes in the Illinois Valley and I, I wrote the Illinois River Road birding map that is uh, all the hot spots for bird watching in the Illinois Valley. Actually one of those I published in uh, Bird Watching Magazine as a hot spot near you. As I said, I've been working on the boat for more than 25 years, and every year I choose another layer of history, and I dive deep and try to learn as much as I can. And so when the boat is cruising up and down the river, it's my job to share the stories of the river. I often begin with the ancient geology, the fact that Starved Rock is 400 million years old, and we often pass these beautiful Palisade Bluffs, uh, 300 to 400 million year old limestone. We see coal barges that are carrying coal that was laid down more than 200 million years ago. The river itself is the old remnant of the Mississippi River. At one point, the Mississippi River flowed here in what is now the Illinois River Valley. And then the glaciers came and pushed the Mississippi River a little further west. And when the glaciers melted, they reopened the Illinois River Valley. So everywhere you go on this boat, everywhere the boat travels, you are traveling through layers and layers and layers of both geological and human history. It wasn't until the first steamboat came. The first steamboat came in 1829 and it was called the Liberty. And just downstream from where we're sitting right now is Liberty Street. That's where the Liberty docked. And it radically transformed Peoria and Peoria's history. The population not only doubled, but within five years, multiplied by 10. 10 times as many people lived here because steamboats not only brought people, but it brought the goods to build the city, brought lumber, helped to build the industry, and the people who lived here then had access to markets. It's amazing to me to think that farmers' goods, grown here along the banks of the Illinois River, loaded on a steamboat, could sail down to New Orleans, be loaded onto an ocean-going vessel, and sail to Europe. And literally, apples grown here in Illinois would be served on a king's table in Paris or London, that these riverboats have long been a very major part of our economy and our connection to the world. There are quite a number of famous historical riverboat captains. Of course, young Sam Clemens being probably one of the most famous, who uh, went on to become the famous writer Mark Twain. But one of his friends and rivals was a Peorian, Henry Detweiler. You might have heard of Detweiler Park or Detweiler Drive. The Detweiler family built their fortune on steamboats. Henry Detweiler came here when he was just 10 years old 
and he got a job working on a steamboat, eventually earned his pilot's license, and then bought his own boat and delivered troops and supplies throughout the Civil War. Imagine sneaking a steamboat down the river. How do you do that? You put a deckhand on the bow with a lead weight tied to a rope, a knot tied every six feet. Mark one, you got six feet of water. Mark twain, two knots, you've got 12 feet, clear sailing. Riverboats have been an important part of Peoria history from the beginning. It's amazing, the layers and layers of history. You know, once the railroads came through, steamboats as cargo vessels kind of fell out of favor. And so packet boats become more popular. The Spirit of Peoria is carrying on that tradition. For a long time, it was the Julia Bell Swain. And anybody who's been in Peoria for, you know, more than 30 or 40 years, they have fond reminiscence of the Julia Bell Swain, another famous riverboat captain, John Hartford. After he made his fortune and fame with Gentle On My Mind, he always wanted to be a steamboat captain, so he chose to move to Peoria so that he could apprentice on the Julia Bell and earn his riverboat license. We're real excited and believe that there's a lot of pent-up demand for local tourism, and because we're not a huge cruise ship like a city on the sea, uh, we're a relatively small boat with lots of open air decks, lots of opportunity to be outside. Uh, we have a full season lined up this year and we've already sold out several of our cruises. Um, we have really wonderful food and great entertainment, if I do say so myself. A couple of fine musicians and I'm the resident storyteller and historian. And we run a variety of cruises. One of my favorite things are the overnight trips to Starve Rock, where you board the boat in the morning, typically on a Monday morning. Um, we spend the whole day on the river. We'll spend the night at Starve Rock, where often I'll lead a nature hike in the evening and a bird walk in the morning. And then we get back on the boat and come downstream the next day, right back to your car, so you don't have to worry about transportation. We also do trips heading south. And one of my favorite, we go to Hannibal, Missouri. That's actually a five-day cruise, three days on the Illinois River, and then two days on the Mississippi, with some time in Hannibal to see the sights of Mark Twain, to visit Mark Twain's cave, to go to his boyhood home. And I probably have about five hours of Mark Twain stories in my head uh, that I, I shared throughout the couple of days on the river. We also do a three-day trip to St. Louis, and then you can book a day trip from St. Louis to Alton or from Alton to Florence. And of course, with most of our cruises, if you just want a day trip, then you can board in the morning, spend the day on the boat, and we'll get you back to your car in the evening. Uh, we also do a lot of evening entertainment cruises, and of course, the boat's available for rent. Uh, we've hosted weddings and bachelor parties and all kinds of family gatherings, and that's always a lot of fun, too. Hey, we're on the uh, Spirit of Peoria going down through the Narrows right now, and I'm with Norm Kelly. And, uh, Norm is the historian for Peoria. And Norm's going to tell us a little bit about Peoria. You know, Peoria is, uh, used to be the second largest city in the state of Illinois. It's like number five or six now. But what at the, in the beginning, it was a really uh, vibrant uh, metropolis. And why did Peoria become such a great place? Well, you know, we can go back to 1828 when the very first steamboat, yeah. their packet boats, right. steamboat, come chugging up the river, and a guy uh, named Warner, and a few of the people there, including a guy named Roos, R-O-U-S-E, he thought, hey, look at this looks like a good thing. Where'd you guys come from? And they came from New Orleans. Well, those men decided, we're gonna make a place for these boats to land. And that's with the first thought, and they did. And so that's, it, what, that's what brought 
the, the steamboat is what really started Fury going. Absolutely. Because there was no trains, there was no planes, there was no automobiles, there was no roads. No. And the river was the road. It was the world. And 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 then in 1835 we became a, a town. And then in 1845 we became a city. And of course what happened was by then we have nine distilleries. Think of that, four or five breweries. There was another guy who was quite famous in this area, and there's a park named after him. There's mm -hmm. a marina named after him, and his family still owns the marina. It's in the Detweiler yeah. Trust. Mm -hmm. Do you that, know a little bit about that Mr. Was, Detweiler? That was Henry, Captain. Captain Henry. Captain Henry Detweiler, and he plied the waters, and during the Civil War, he was an absolute hero. He was a hero. He would go in and bring supplies and bring injured troopers out, and Peorians read about him all the time. Well, uh, then when he retired and came back here to Peoria, of course, he, ha he owned all that land. Uh, you know, one of the first articles I wrote for your magazine was uh, hunting in old Peoria. And the figures, I know people thought I was exaggerating. Well, this was full of ducks and geese and swans. You keep it up. And everything. They had turtles and frogs and every type of fish and bass and crappies. You know, and it was all, all for commercial use. We can hear somebody blowing their whistle over there. Maybe we ought to blow our whistle back too. Can we do that? <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, we're good. <laughs> there, we blew the whistle back so they know we're here. Uh, I'm riding in a, a beautiful place, and my dad, like I said earlier, my father, all he ever wanted to do was be a riverboat uh, pilot. What's the difference between a pilot and a captain? Well, uh, the the captain's always in charge, but the pilot does most of the, most of the navigating a lot of times. A lot of times, you'll actually get it. They'll put a, what's called a trip pilot or a river pilot on uh, to take you through a certain section of the river. Uh, you know, before the uh, before the lock before the lock and uh, the chain of rocks locks was put on down in uh, down by St. Louis, there was actually a, a pilot that would actually board your boat to help take help, help take the river boats through the rapids. They knew they knew the they, river. So they knew the river. Yes. Now the way they navigated the river years ago is you had to understand where every snag was, where every stump was, mm -hmm. wherever there was a sandbar, a sunken boat or whatever, you had to know that by memory. Right, they actually had to, you had to actually draw the, the section of the river that you were gonna navigate. You had to prove to the, the Coast Guard that you could navigate that section, and you had to draw it out by hand uh, every mile of that river you wanted to navigate. So you had to know every stream, every tributary, yes. every, every rock. And, and now with the aid of uh, GPS's and radars and everything, um, that's, it's not quite uh, the same to get, to get your pilot's license. Yeah, yeah. It's still a, a long venture. It's about a, 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 you, you're required to have 360 eight-hour days um, on a vessel, um, and you have to have some other master pilots um, uh, notarize your, your, your license, and then you actually have to go um, to the Coast Guard and take, take, the, take the test, and there's actually a school you can go to in order to get your license. Now, uh, how old are you now? I am 44. You're 44, and how long have you been doing that? Uh, 21 years now. So this has been your life? Yes. Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, I'm very envious, and uh, you're doing something that, uh, you know, you're doing something, when you get up and come down here, this is fun. Yes, it is. It's, it's fun. I like I mean, you can't, I mean, this is a good time. This is a lot of fun, piloting a boat on the Illinois River. I mean, especially if you've got the history background like myself and many other people, you really, really like it. We want to thank Captain Alex for a great ride here on the Illinois River on the uh, Spirit of Peoria, and uh, we're going to do it again. In fact, tonight we're going to take the, uh, what do you call that, the Midnight Cruise? Our Moonlight Cruise Moonlight tonight. Cruise. Yes. Yeah. Featuring Barry Cloyd. And Barry Cloyd uh, is going to be uh, on our show. We've got a uh, CD that uh, he gave us with some great music, and there's a uh, song wrote about this boat, and you'll get to hear that. But I want to thank Alex for a great trip, and if you're uh, ever in Peoria and want to have a relaxing, great time and view the Illinois River, the spirit of the Peoria is the place to do it. Thanks an awful lot. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. In 2017, switchblade knives became legal. You must have an Illinois Firearms ID card and you must be 21 years of age to possess one. Here are some examples of switchblade knives. These are economy models here. This is a side folder. Another one, and we have an out the front. These sell for in the $30 to $60 range. A little winter camouflage here. And uh, the, some of the high-end switch blades are Benchmades. Here's a side folder. 
and most of the side folders will have a safety. Flip the safety off and you're ready to go. And it's pretty heavy spring tension. They make it out the front and most of them have a pocket clip. And uh, that's an example of out the front. And then we have a selection of Cobra Tech knives. These are pretty good quality knives and uh, at a reasonable price. They're in the $100 range for the most part. And again, it's out the front. If you're in law enforcement, they have a glass breaker on the back end of them. They come with a nice hard case and many different colors and blade styles. So if your hands are full and you need to operate a knife with one hand, a switch blade is a good way to go. I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. It was time to get back on board the Spirit of Peoria for the night cruise. Entertaining that night was the very talented Barry Cloyd. Howdy, I'm Barry Cloyd and I'm a singer, songwriter, musician, uh, one of the resident musicians on the Spirit of Peoria Riverboat. And uh, I've been doing this for about 14 years now, playing music up and down the Illinois, Mississippi and touching our nose into the Missouri and headed toward the Ohio and things like that. It's, it's a true authentic paddle wheeler. And I've been fortunate enough to get a chance to play music on this boat. I mean, there are worse ways to make a living, right? There's so much history here, it just, just jumps out of the river right at you, along with the Asian carp, of course. Time machine. Feel the whistle blow right up your spine. Catch the emerald blue reflecting sun. Passage to a simpler world as laying on the tide. How they sort of were as a time machine. Come on and take a ride. First time I left home, the first time I was free. Got too close to this river as my day shore. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. 
Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. Eastport Marina, one of the only marinas in its class between Chicago and St. Louis, on Mariner's Way in East Peoria. Goodwill, supporting our veterans with job placement assistance, health, housing, and resource referrals, and the General Wayne A. Downing Home for Veterans, all because you shop and donate. And by Lori Feld of Allstate Insurance, conveniently located in Peoria, Springfield, and their new location at 411 East Washington Street in East Peoria. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. Thanks for watching another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. We'll be back real soon to get some of those morel mushrooms and do some boating on the Illinois River. We love to boat and we love Eastport Marina. It is a great place to put your boat with a lot of amenities. Yes, and a it wonderful is. Wonderful swimming pool. Yeah, we like uh, that's uh, that's our summer now these days. We don't really take too many trips, but uh, we do like to boat on the Illinois River. What a beautiful place. We'll see you next month. As soon as I find where they lay Tied off them jolly and leaving mines On a long, hot summer day And for every day I'm working on the Illinois River Get a half a day off with pay Oh, Tobo picking up barges On a long, hot summer day A gal in Pekin, she's a good old gal, okay. Oh, she's sitting there waiting by a window fan on a long, hot summer day. For every day I'm working on the Illinois River, get a half a day off with pay. Oh, so bold picking up barges on a long, hot summer day. up barges on a long hot summer day and forever day i'm working on the hill and no river get a half a day off.